Welcome to Tim Blackett Reads. I'm Tim Blackett and I like to read. If you're new here, that's great. So am I. I've been making videos elsewhere for a while now, but I've decided to migrate over here, talk about some books that I'm enjoying reading and all of that. And I thought for my first video, I'd start off with a banger. So get ready for my mid-year book freak out. What is my favorite book of the year? Well, I'm going to give honorable mention to Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead by Emily Austin. I'm giving this honorable mention because it's a reread for me. I read it last year and then again this year. And no matter what, it's five stars and it'll be on my list of top ten favorites for a long time. It's about a lesbian atheist who accidentally gets a job at a Catholic church. And it goes from there and it's talking about mental health and anxiety and our relationships with family and friends and lovers and all kinds of things but it's just a great read also honorable mention to avenue of champions by connor kerr this is a novel but to me it feels more like a series of connected stories it's got a lot of different points of view multi-perspectives multi-faceted story of a young indigenous boy growing up on the avenue of champions in edmonton alberta canada and it's a heartwarming and sometimes devastating story of the struggles of Canada's indigenous peoples but also the lengths they'll go to to survive and the amount of care and passion they have for their family and their loved ones and their resiliency and I think this is an important book and I loved every minute of it but here's the thing who starts a video with their number one favorite that doesn't seem right to me so I'm gonna save it to the end I don't know if those are the rules, if I can break the rules, I'm new here, I can do whatever I want. I don't read a lot of sequels, in fact, I looked through all of the 38 books that I've read this year and not a single one of them was a single. So, I've decided instead to talk about Saga. This is the trade number 10. Saga is a comic book, and I don't count those towards my reading goals, so this is just extra fluff. But saga is just my favorite comic book ever written it is uh it is an expansive space opera story about these two warring alien tribes one lives on a moon one lives on a planet and they've hated each other for centuries nobody remembers not hating each other but it just turns out that two of them one from the moon and one from the planet fall in love and they make a baby and so then everyone on all these warring factions wants that baby and wants to get rid of the baby because it is proof of the fact that the two sides could potentially get along. Besides all that, the art is just beautiful all the way through. Fiona Staples does all the art. She's from Calgary, Alberta. And there's queer representation in here. There's trans representation. There's all kinds of diverse characters. It's just a beautiful story. They talk about all kinds of issues throughout. Found family tropes. Uh, uh, addiction. Talking about addiction. Talking about pacifism versus violence and... It's just great. I got a lot of new releases I'm looking forward to, but for this I chose this because I, for one, I just picked it up today. It's called The Center by Aisha Manazir Siddiqui. I don't even know how to say her name, but I was at Indigo this morning doing some editing and then I took a break to walk around the stacks and I found this book and then I Googled it because I thought, something was fishy and it says yeah release date is july 11th and here it is july 6th but this was on the shelf so i snatched it up and here it is the sender is a speculative fiction book i don't know a lot about it except for the main character is trying to learn a language and her boyfriend is ha sort of like a genius when it comes to languages and she starts probing him about it and he finally tells her about the center which guarantees that you will be fluent in a language in 10 days of studying there and so she decides to go there but it turns into this sort of culty weird mysterious thing that's that's as far as i know and it just sounds really interesting it's about you know, language and translation and telling stories and blah 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 it just seems right up my alley and i'm excited about it Another one I'm looking forward to, though, is Your Driver is Waiting by Priya Guns. I bought this one on a whim a few months back, so I don't know if that counts as a new release, but it's out this year, and I haven't read it yet, and I'm keeping it a secret. I have literally no idea what it's about other than 
I thought the cover was deadly. So I'm looking forward to that one. I'd be lying if I answered this question with anything other than my own book, Grandview Drive, a collection of short stories, which is coming out in November of 2023. I am very excited about it. It's my first book. And if you want to check it out, you can check it out. It's, it's available for pre-order now. But I'm sure that's not what the question is asking. So I'm going to give a real answer, though this one is kind of cheating too, because you know what? I don't actually know what is being released later this year. I don't know how people find these things out. I don't know how people are getting their arcs and all of that stuff. I really don't know. I should look into that, but I do know that Emily Austin, the author of Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead, will be releasing a book in January of 2024. It's called Interesting Facts About Space. I just looked it up, and I am really looking forward to it. I just loved her first book so much, and I cannot wait to read her second. For my biggest disappointment, I am going to go with I Want to Die But I Want to Eat Talkbaki by Bake Sihi. I was really looking forward to this. I saw a number of my friends on the other app talking about how good it was and how interesting it was, and it sounded wonderful. Right up my alley, autofiction, sort of, more memoir, whatever. But it's about a woman and her taking notes while she's at therapy and then talking about her life and the struggles she's with, and I just could not relate to the woman in any way. I sh maybe should have known that going into it, but I expected to be to get something out of it, and she just had this weird anxious mind that is so far away from my anxious mind that I couldn't connect, and, I, and it was a big disappointment. I'm sorry, Bake. My biggest surprise was 100% definitely Light from Uncommon Stars by Raika Aoki. I must have heard about it from someone and I placed it on hold on my Libby app as an audiobook and it came available to borrow and so I borrowed it. I had no idea what it was about but I was at that time for work driving around four hours a day so over the span of three-ish days I listened to it and it just blew me away. It is a science fiction slash fantasy type thing where uh, a woman has sold her soul to the devil in exchange for ushering seven more souls to the devil so she has to sort of coerce people into selling their souls to the devil so we meet her when she's looking for her seventh soul and once she's ushered that one to hell she will be able to then play her music again she's a world-renowned violinist but since selling her soul, she has un been unable to play in front of people. Anyway, her seventh student is a trans girl who's been living on the streets, but she carries a violin around with her. And the story is about them learning to care about each other and developing a bond. And then uh, while that is going on, there are a troop of aliens who are running a donut shop and trying to save the whole universe from destruction and this is nothing like i typically read if i knew what it was about i never would have picked it up uh, but somehow someone convinced me i should put it on hold and there it was and i listened to it and it blew me away i if five stars for sure i think everyone should read it Jenny Slate is my favorite new author. Jenny Slate is famous. She is a stand-up comedian and an actor. She's been in a lot of movies. You, you know who Jenny Slate is, but she also wrote this book. It's a memoir. It's called Little Weirds. The cover is beautiful. The whole thing is beautiful. It has a perfect title because it is weird. It is different than anything I have ever read. And no matter how many times I say that about other books, it's true of this one. It is a memoir, but it is written in these fragmentary little vignettes about her life and it's just so many so much metaphor and colorful language and it, it's like beautiful and kind of funny but far more beautiful than it is funny and i am so glad i read this book i have never thought about having a crush on a fictional character i know that's a thing people do but i don't so this is a strange question for me and one i had a very hard time answering but i've decided to go with caroline hood the main character in the illness lesson by claire beams this was a really interesting book it's about a 
a woman and her father in the 1800s who start a school for girls and it's going to be a revolutionary sort of feminist vision of a school where girls can come and learn the same thing boys are learning and so that they can move forward and be all that they can be but then these red birds start moving into town and it's a bird that nobody has ever seen before a new discovery and the more birds that come the sicker the girls in the school get so it's a weird mysterious thing where nobody knows what's happening but Caroline Hood is the school teacher and she doesn't take no shit from no one and eventually she decides to break free of her father's dominance and of any man's dominance and she moves to become who she wants to be even if it means she might have to live in poverty and and other hardships but uh it was a good book and i thought caroline was pretty cool for a new favorite character i think i'm choosing halyard and Saint from this book two of the main characters the the protagonists of this book uh this book was amazing might might be up there by the top it might be my favorite you have to wait to the end to see but it's about a near future sort of speculative speculative fiction where corporations have to pay money if they are going to be doing work that might cause uh, animal species to go extinct and they have to pay even more a lot more if those animals have been deemed intelligent as opposed to non-intelligent and so halyard is the male protagonist and he works for one of those corporations and Resaint is the female protagonist and she works for the corporations as well but she is a scientist who gets to choose whether or not a species based on her research research is intelligent and they both live in the gray area and they both have major flaws but they're both funny and intelligent and weird and i loved everything about this book and the two main characters made me love it even more i was gonna try to do this without any repeats but i have to include light from uncommon stars for this answer it made me cry twice i was listening to it on audio driving around for work and literally crying real tears in two different spots it's just a beautiful heartwarming tale what do you mean books that make you happy i think all the books i'm reading make me happy unless they're big steaming piles of hot garbage but most of the books I read I enjoy, at least enough to get to the end, so they all make me happy. But one that made me laugh out loud is What Remains of Elsie Jane by Chelsea Wakelin. Emily Austin blurbed, which is why I picked it up, but it is describing it. It doesn't sound like a funny book. It's about a woman who has lost her husband to substance abuse and uh, the story of her becoming a single mom but having to work through her grief while going to work and while being alone with her child and all of these things and she gets obsessed with a, a murder case down the road and she starts talking to a man online who claims to be able to travel back in time and she thinks she might be able to fix it it's a weird and wild book and it deals with some really heavy and deep topics but it's actually surprisingly funny and in the end it's a hopeful book i really love this book I love book covers and I don't even care if this question was asking me if it was a beautiful writing or beautiful prose or whatever because I just want to show off some of the books that I've bought simply based on their covers. I don't know what these books are about so you just get to look at the covers. This one's called Ghost Forest by Pink Xuan Fang. Look at how cool that is. This is Chrysalis. I walked past this a dozen times and it caught my eye every single time. So finally, I just picked it up. Looks weird, but awesome. A Ghost in the Throat. I think someone recommended me this book, but I was happy to find the cover was just as stunning as it is. And lastly, A Manual for How to Love Us by Aaron Slaughter. This is short stories and I love short stories. So I am looking forward to that because it looks so cool. I'm not even going to answer that question because I am the world's worst mood reader and anytime I ever make a strict TBR list or tell myself I need to get to these books, that pretty much guarantees that I will not get to them. This shelf right behind me, the whole thing is my TBR shelf. Those are the books I have not read 
these are the books I have read. That's not including stacks on the floor, stacks over there. I got a lot of books, and I got all the time in the world, sort of. So I'm just going to choose what I want and read them. And now what you've all been waiting for, my number one book of 2023. It has to be A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. And this could have been my book for almost all of the categories. Best new author, favorite characters, books that make me happy, books that made me cry, biggest surprise of the year. This book was just amazing. It is about a woman living on the west coast of Canada who finds a Hello Kitty lunchbox washed up on the shore and inside is the journal of a teenage girl who's living in Japan and the book jumps back and forth between the woman's story in Canada and the girl's story in Japan and it's a coming of age story at the same time as it's a story about aging and feeling like life has passed you by and it's a meditation on time and it deals with suicide ideation and it deals with mental health issues and it's just beautiful in all kinds of ways and I am sorry that it took me as many years as it did to read it. Go read Ruth Aseki. And that's it for my first video on YouTube. I'm just a big nerd who loves reading and loves talking about reading even more. Also a writer so if you'd like I would love it if you push subscribe or whatever you do on here. If you want to follow along and you want to talk more about books, let's do it. I'll see you next time on Tim Blackett Reads.